The true cost of the tragedy in Waverly, Tennessee should be counted in the lives lost and missing. And if you spend time talking with the survivors who were there that Saturday morning, it's a miracle that toll wasn't higher. I can give you a story. She yeah. tell it better than me. Um, that, this is actually just like a TikTok of everything. It's like, it's, this is when, hold on. This <laughs> man's a saver poem, so. <laughs> well, I know his. Are you surprised the first thing you say? She said, Daddy, I'm going out to hold my phone. I'm like, no, I'm going to hold you. Yeah, um, mm. I have some of them, like, memories, too. How fast was all this, too, guys? Man, it was, how fast did water come up? Yeah. Miss Marie across the street called oh. me. She said, uh, want me to come over and help her get the tarp? off of a car so we get out of the way in case the water goes up. 8 a.m. Time I go over there and move the car, which by the time I got to the car, done washed into her house, she had a truck. I ran it up Damos, and I mean her daughter walked back down here. By the time I get from up there to over here, I almost couldn't make it, wash three cars away, but there was two of them. Well, she washed them on down there and brought them back. But um, I, I held on that bush right there because it swept me into that, and then it swept me over into that tree. Stuff hit me and it over my head, about seven foot deep out here. And I finally got, somehow or another, I got, I got back to the window and got, got back to her in a moment. I had a lot of friends over and I woke up to uh, them trying to get to their parents because they couldn't move their cars or anything. And they went down there, it was eight o'clock, finally got to their parents. And I took a video, it was like 8.27 of the water coming into the house. And then nine, nine o'clock, not even, might be 8.40. Our windows are getting busted out from the water. And you saw this whole disaster oh, yeah. happen? Yeah. Like, what was that? What was that moment like? Because it had to be surreal. Well, it was. It was just kind of like, well, if that house is floating and it's on top of ours, is our house moving too? Me to death. I, I, I had her and yeah. her and Rachel. Man, it scared me to death. I didn't know what to do. Because at that moment, we were debating going into the attic, and then we saw that house. And, we were just and then we saw the house next door, like this one here, it floated probably 30, 40 feet back that way, come off its foundation. Um, that scared the fire by me because I didn't know how I was going to take care of her. When you were in the water, what did you think you were going to get out? I knew I had to. I, I had to. I had no choice. But I just, I had to. You had to get you know? back that luckily 10 feet. We, luckily, our, our dog, he, he comes swimming by us once. I was hanging on to her and her mom and, and I reached up and grabbed hold of the dog, and he pulled me just enough to get out of the, get out of the car. And he turned around to come back around. Remember how he done that? And uh, we got up to the to the house and held on. See, there, uh, that house was beside dog us. Swam for probably two or three hours in the water. Which, so this is the house. Right. Yeah, the, yeah. This is supposed to be beside us, and they got moved off their foundation. Yeah, that's why we're standing out there in the on, yeah. the, on the windowsill. Yeah. Wow. That's I didn't fun. know what I was going to do because. I don't know what the, else to do. The, the scariest thing was calling 911 and being put on hold and or getting hung up on because I don't know how many times we called and I was in Dixon like at the, on them and tried to get transferred away really and you couldn't hear anything. Like I it was static and I'm like I went to power sitting outside and the, we're in the water. We're floating in the water and we need somebody here and they're like we'll put you on the list. Lightning, thunder, people, lines falling. Yeah. It's, it was, it was wild. It was one of the most, it was pretty wild. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Water just come up, just, just, bam. See, in 2010, we had that flood. And water didn't get above the porch. So when this one come, I thought, no big deal. You know, it's just in the yard, but it never, wrong. It never goes above our porch. It was up, it, you can look in the house and see how deep it was in the house. We was right here, water was up to like right here, and. and was all freaking out. Water higher than anyone had ever seen it or thought possible. Any warning was met with disbelief. We, I woke up from a phone call from my neighbor at a um, little after 8 o'clock. She told me that we need to get in the truck and go. Um, the water was getting ready to come over the bridge. Um, then whenever I got up and I looked outside, it wasn't over the bridge yet, so I thought, you know, I might have a little bit of time trying to get my kids dressed. Came outside, I turned my truck on, went back inside to get my kids dressed. 
By the time we came outside, there was no saving anything. We were wading way steep over to my mother-in-law's here in the next building. And we had to rescue a person on the bottom and another guy that was trapped in the back. It's just something you never want to go through. It came out of nowhere. I, like, I was sitting on, this is our park right here. This is where we live. Both vehicles that we own, gone. They're way down that way. I was sitting there smoking a cigarette on the porch and some guy pulled in and was like, hey, it's about to flood. Y'all need to, you know, go somewhere. So I was like, well, it ain't, it, you know, I was thinking all day it ain't gonna flood, like nothing like this, you know, usually like a little flood might get up. So I was like, sitting there smoking a cigarette. As soon as I seen it come up over this bridge, dude, it was just like a mini tsunami, just yeah. I ran inside, we started grabbing kids. My mom lived in this top building. So we ran in here. I tried running back to get what I could of my kids. And my house just had a shot, you know, I couldn't even grab nothing because I was just freaking out. And I was like, and then my mom was like, come on, son. And I could hear everybody yelling from over here. So by the time I came back out of that door, this car, that white car was parked right here, down up here. And the water was already up to here, moving cars. I came out of that door, I was, they had a duck move at, away from that car. This car hit that front wall. I think that's what made that collapse and just, it was just crazy. Water was just flew through here. Bust that wall out. It was currents coming through here, through the breezeways there. I watched one girl, I think she was over there. She got, there's a tree right here. She got knocked out by the water. The current was so strong and it pulled her all the way down here. I seen her smack that tree and I don't know if it knocked her unconscious, what? I never seen, I seen her come back up. Okay. You know, hearing little kids' voices, we're about to die, we're about to die. You know, that's so heartbreaking, man. And that was your kids? Yeah, my kids were telling me, Daddy, we're gonna die, Dad, we're gonna die. They was right to help me, signs hanging them out these top windows for, you know, rescue trucks that were over there and helicopters that was flying above. People was trapped in down here. An entire community's lives changed in a minute. At one point, around 1% of the town's population was considered killed or missing. I have family, well not fam. I consider Friends. their family friends that are missing and they've been missing since the flood. And just like, that could have been me. I could, I could be the one that nobody can find at the moment. I could have been the one swept under the water and not here anymore. We're very fortunate compared to a lot of people. We got good families that's, that's come in there and, and helped us out a lot. And, and all of our people's alive, you know, we know where they're at. Has but, it sunk in yet? Have you guys well, been able to process it yet? I mean, no, so not fresh. really. Not really. I, that night, I didn't sleep a wink. I was. It's still hard to talk about. So. Yeah. yeah it, it, you know, talk me going to the house right now. We've been here since '09. We bought it, and of course, no insurance on the flood insurance because it's paid for. So we didn't. You didn't have to have flood insurance. We didn't think nothing about it. So. Anyway, yeah. No, it hasn't really sunk in yet. I haven't slept good in the last couple of nights, just, just thinking about it. How close was it, guys, to that moment of life and death? Was I, the, went under, the I went under two or three times, didn't think I was going to get back. Floating out the window, wondering if I was, I, I thought, because I was on, on the couch cushion, and I was going to try to go this way, because that was just like, the, the, this, ground, is, this yeah. is it. This is like, I'm either going to make it out or, I'm not. It was just kind of, it was, it was scary, but luckily he found his footing and the dog got him. We got back up to where there wasn't any current by the house. How much was it worrying about your own life or worrying about your family's life? I wasn't worried about me a bit. I didn't have I no thoughts about me. Um, if, it, if she and Rachel hadn't been there, I'd, I'd, I'd got tired of standing there and I'd went for it. But um, I mean, I was already on higher ground. Than, I come in here because they were here. The only reason, only reason, I more about me a bit. Now, the only reason we didn't get out is we were, wait, he was helping people. We were waiting on him to tell us what to do. And the water come up so fast. Yeah, by the time he got back, it was I wasn't already, five minutes. we couldn't open the door anymore. They let him in. He had to climb in through the window. So how does a creek in a wide valley with a relatively low grade change in elevation have a mini tsunami catastrophic flood event? It almost feels more like a hurricane slash tornado response with the way things are thrown around. And you can see that the water came through here and everything is just kind of clinging to the trees and everything is going that direction. It might be because of what happened just east of town where the railroad embankment collapsed. A record 17 inches of rain had fallen upstream and Trace Creek was raging with water. Pictures shared to me by a man who lives just east of the embankment break shows how high the water was around 7.30 Saturday morning. By 8 a.m., according to timestamps on his phone, 
This is how high the water was as he took a picture from his boat that he had swam out to. If you zoom in on this picture, you can see how much water was flooding under the raised railroad tracks. Just to the left of this frame was where the railroad embankment appears to have failed. From high above, you can see from the mud and the damage, the force of the water that was released. That raised railroad track could have been acting as a levee or a dam, and when it failed catastrophically as it was overtopped, the force of that water was then funneled downstream, also by that raised track. It moved this house right here. That's how fast it was going. That how this is a house right here that was on a foundation from across the street over there. It was coming. At, we was in this building. It was coming at us so fast, and everybody was freaking out, running to the back side of that because they thought it was going to hit this and made this collapse. The water got so high, it was at the it was at the top of these, uh, the bottom lower part of the windows up there. We was up there freaking out. We was like, we don't know what we're going to do. If it gets any higher, you know, we was all trying to prepare, you know, on what to do. We didn't know if we was going to have to climb out the window, try to get the top or what, you know. So this is from where? A building. From like here? Yeah, yeah, that building right there. Right there. On the left. So how high was that? Uh, looking at it. Well, that, uh, was... that was on the second floor, so it was... It's about as high as... Where's my... About to that line right there. The first line. That's terrifying. Yeah. Has, has anything like this ever happened? Uh, no. Back in 2010, there was so. a huge flood, but not as It wasn't aggressive. this bad. It wasn't like, it was like over time. But there was no time. No time to leave, think, or react. Just an instinct to survive. Well, okay, so we were sitting on the kitchen table because the water had came up a little bit. We were sitting there. And once we opened this window to let the water come through, because we figured that would help at least not be trapped in here. And once we saw the water get up here, like our microwave from there came out because the current took it out. And when we saw that it was, it was rising in here, we were like, we don't, need, we don't need to be in here. We don't know how it's going to get. So we got a couch cushion from the couch, and I was the first one to go out. And then my mom's like, you can't let her go by herself. So my dad was with me, and then she came out. So we went out this way, and we were floating, kind of like in the middle, in the middle of the yard where all that trash is. So we were floating there. I was trying to go that way. We were just, we were just going in circles because the current is. There, was, there wasn't current right there in the middle, but there's current like all around us trying to take us every which direction. I just, we knew not to go that way because of the creek, but we couldn't help it if the current was going to take us that way. That was what was going to happen. What if it did? We would have went underneath the current, and we would have went straight towards the creek, like. Our car flooded down two blocks, and I, I, for the longest time we couldn't find that, so I was like, well, that, that's gone, that's in the creek, because it's right beside us. But. So, so you're literally just floating on a couch cushion right there? Yeah, right in the middle, and Dad somehow, he found his footing, he found something to stand on, and he, the dog helped us push us back here, and then this is where we ended up going. There's a lot of glass, we'll watch it, but it, that, um, This is the window we sat on. I don't know if you'll be able to see anything, but there's, there's a tub right there underneath, which we can go outside and look at that too. And that's what we stood on for two hours, was a tub. And if that tub wasn't there, we would have went with the current. We wouldn't have had any other choice to float away. Because at one moment in time, when we first got out here, I was holding this couch cushion with us because we're like, if the water raises up, we're going to have to have something to hold on to if we go. And um, Jericho, my dog, was trying to grant, don't get on to it because he had no footing. He swam for two hours. But um, it took me. Like The current pulled the couch cushion, took me, and I lost grip of my dad. And I went under, and then he got off, and he got me. And we got back over there, and we just had to let go of it. We're like, well, it's not helping us holding it right now. And we uh, sat up here. The water got level with this inside it was higher because you could see over the windows and eventually it went down and we climbed back in here once we noticed because we were using there's a light there's a light pole or whatever you want to call it over there and we we're using there's a marker there and we watched it and we were like we we're watching the water how high it got and if it was finally going down and it went down and we came back up here and sat on our bed 
It seems like your dog was a big hero and a big part of this too, huh? Yeah, uh, Jericho, he's, uh, he's a chocolate lab with a little pit bull in him. He's helped us a lot. We'll go swimming with him and if you jump off a bluff, he'll come to you. He's not like those dogs that jump on you. He comes to you, lets you grab onto you, grab onto him, and he takes you back to the shore type sort of thing. And that's that what he did here? Basically, he let us, we grabbed onto him, and he pulled us back over to here. This right here, front part, this was our living room. He's barely hanging on by a thread right there. This was our living room here. And, uh. Do you want to go in? Yeah, I, will. I mean, I do. It's up to you if you want to. Yeah. We had a couch, sectional couch, I was right here. You know, we always kept our house clean. <laughs> you can't tell now. We had a section right here, a bunch of stuff right here. This room right here, there was a wall right here in the hallway there, a kitchen there. This was my oldest boy's room. That was right there. My youngest son's room was the next room over where the walls ripped out. And then on the back side of that was my daughter's room. There's a big hole back there too where stuff was just flung out. It, it's a disaster man i feel sorry for everybody i've heard there's like 30 something people that's already dead and a bunch more people missing i heard there was a set of twins that was just found dead over here to the west of town searchers have had the terrible task of trying to find those missing looking through the woods along the creek bed in fields and poking through hills of debris that were left by that mountain of water like whole houses that's when you see it coming through the window or what was the we see the house coming and they're like, there's a house? Dad's like, is that a house or is it a building? Because we saw a lot of sheds floating away and we couldn't tell at first because we saw it coming from like over the street and then it got closer and we're like, that's an actual house. And I just, I wanted to take videos because like one of my friends had asked me earlier to take pictures of their car for insurance when it first started happening. So I was like, well, maybe if I have actual like photos of this evidence that this happened to us, maybe we'll get something from it. These short videos were the way 17-year-old Sadie Vaughn tried to let her friends know she was alive, but barely. I could get messages, and the girls from volleyball were texting. I couldn't text them back, but on my volleyball team, they were texting me, and they are like, Sadie, you need to get out of there, and I couldn't respond to them. Like people, for a whole three hours, I wasn't responding to anybody, and everybody was worried, but I just, I was just like, here, this is what's going on, and I was trying to send them a video. That's how I took the video of the house. It's one of the reasons because I was trying to let them know, like, I'm okay, I'm in my house, but this is what's going on. That would be a hopeless feeling to have people just so worried about you and you not be able to tell them it's yes. okay. I, I could get all the messages they were sending me. I could get everything, but I could not respond to anything. Survivors I spoke with seem to remember helplessness, a helplessness to save themselves, and worse, others. I guess you could say one of the worst things was, I know I'm like jumping all over the place, no. but uh, when we were right here trying to figure our way out of our house, we could hear our neighbors, the ones that floated a couple of feet away or yards or whatever, screaming for help. It was an old lady, like 80s, 90s, and we could just hear them screaming for help. I had no clue where it was coming from. And there's nothing you can do. Yeah, because we couldn't. We were trying to figure out how to get our, out of our house. I'm like, we had people we could see from top building now in these other buildings back here screaming out the window for help. Little kids and everything, you know. And you're just sitting there helpless, like, like, what do I do? This current's gonna wipe me out if I even try to get there. It's rough, man. With no insurance, those who are still able to try and salvage whatever they have left, and in the end, all that really matters, they say, are their lives. But yeah, if, if this wasn't here, I don't know where, where we would have been. If we would have made it back in through that window, we would have floated down to the creek, or if we would have made it up to the road. A psalm on her back door reads, I shall not be shaken. But how can faith not be tested by this apocalypse that arrived in mere minutes? This is the end of the world. You know, I've read it in the Bible, you know, stuff like this, you know, end of the world type stuff. And, uh, you know, all we could do was pray, man. We all sat up here and prayed, and we prayed, prayed, prayed hard. And then finally, you know, water started settling down, settling down. And only then were the survivors of the deadliest day in Middle Tennessee history able to believe that they would be alive another day. In Waverly, Tennessee, I'm Jonathan Petromala.